Klevral efüzyonlar dersini. Okay. Uh, when we talk about pleural effusion, we mean, we mean to say uh, abnormal accumulation of liquid in the pleural space because at any time uh, a patient, a person uh, has approximately 15 to 50 milliliter of uh, pleural fluid, pleural liquid uh, normally. Uh, the most common causes are congestive heart failure, approximately one third of patients, a malignancy, pneumonia, and pulmonary embolism. So you have to remember uh, at least these uh, four uh, possible causes of pleural effusions. So let's look at the pleural fluid dynamics. I know that uh, you have seen this uh, uh, pathophysiology or physiology uh, uh, slides before um, uh, in previous years. But I want to remind you the, these fluid dynamics because it is very important to remember these dynamics in order to understand the, uh, the diseases uh, uh, related with pleural effusions. Because pleural effusion is not a disease, it is a phenomenon. It is not a, of course, uh, internet phenomenon. It is a phenomenon that can, uh, that can be caused by many diseases, including congestive heart failure, uh, 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 pancreatitis, uh, uh, hepatitis, uh, em emphysema, uh, empyema, uh, and with many other diseases, including ovary carcinoma. So there are uh, actually uh, two main forces that are responsible for the pleural fluid uh, production. One force is hydrostatic pressure. Uh, so uh, there is a vector of hydrostatic pressure uh, and this vector is a, a kind of balance between the hydrostatic balance, uh, hydrostatic pressure of the, uh, the lung and the hydrostatic pressure of the pleural space, as you see here. So actually the pleural fluid uh, is leaking from the mesothelial cells. Uh, the, the main force is hydrostatic pressure of the uh, vessels uh, of the actually blood, blood vessels. So uh, hydrostatic pressure is about uh, 30 centimeter of water from the uh, uh, mesothelial uh, cells to the pleural space. But also there is a balancing hydrostatic pressure of the uh, visceral uh, pleura, visceral uh, system, which is uh, actually created by the lung. And this hydrostatic pressure is about 29 centimeter water. Uh, what about oncotic pressure? Oncotic pressure is the same for uh, uh, parietal space, which is 29 centimeter water. And also it is, uh, it is 29 for the parenchyma. So net driving force is six centimeter water in, inside the pleural space. So this is the uh, force that uh, produces the pleural fluid every time. And of course, this pleural fluid is uh, absorbed uh, by four, actually uh, three uh, sites, uh, diaphragmatic lymphatics, costal lymphatics, and mediastinal lymphatics. Uh, so if we talk about uh, uh, pleural effusion, it means that Either the pleural uh, fluid production is increased uh, uh, out by balancing the uh, absorption, or the pleural fluid is not uh, absorbed very well. So there are many reasons that can cause pleural fluid uh, by these terms. So what are the uh, problems? What are the pathogenetic pathways that can cause pleural effusions. Let's uh, look at those pathways uh, very briefly uh, for uh, remembering these pathways. Uh, first, altered permeability of pleural membranes is one of the reasons actually, and it is caused by inflammation of the lung or inflammation of the pleural uh, uh, membranes. Uh, and it can cause by uh, uh, the uh, pleuritis uh, that can uh, that that involves the 
Parıya tülpüle olarak. Or it can cause by the, the, the uh, inflammation uh, driven by autoimmunity or bacterial infection. And also decreased intravascular oncotic pressure is one of the reasons. And once a pleural effusion has formed, uh, that since that increased the pleural liquid oncotic pressure, the uh, pleural fluid production continues. And it uh, again uh, uh, out uh, balance, balances the uh, absorption. And also increased hydrostatic pressure in the pleural capillaries uh, has been defined as another reason. And it is the reason uh, in the patients with uh, congestive heart failure. Uh, if there is a greater negativity of pressure in the pleural space, for example, if there is a pneumothorax or, or if the lung is collapsed, uh, the, it increases the uh, uh, negativity uh, in the pleural space and uh, it causes pleural effusion. Uh, by analogy, think about the uh, lollipop uh, uh, sucking in, in your mouth. If greater the, greater the force you apply when you are sucking the, uh, the lollipop, uh, greater the uh, pleural fluid it, uh, it pr produces, or greater the, the, uh, the candy fluid uh, produces in your mouth. So lymphatic obstruction is another reason for pleural effusion. It occurs uh, usually uh, uh, due to the uh, infection of the uh, lung, such as non-specific infection or tuberculosis. And also it occurs during the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 lymphatic uh, obstruction caused by uh, malignancy, for example, uh, lung can during lung cancer, or uh, it occurs uh, in the patients with inflammatory diseases such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis or Bechet's disease. Uh, actually, there is a, some kind of weird association between the abdomen and the thorax. Uh, diaphragm is not a very solid, non-permeable uh, membrane. Actually, it has a uh, uh, it, uh, actually, it, it has pores, many pores, and the abdominal liquid can go across uh, over the diaphragm and it can cause pleural fluid. So this is caused, this is uh, called uh, hepatic hydrothorax. Uh, if the patient has pulmonary edema, the intraalveolar uh, uh, plasma can go uh, can uh, leak inside the pleural space, and that can cause pleural effusion also. Uh, it seems a little bit complicated actually because uh, there are many reasons that can cause pleural effusion. In order to make it simpler, uh, we have some kind of classification. If we don't know the reason, or if we don't know the uh, characteristics of the pleural fluid, we call it hydrothorax. It means uh, there is an accumulation of serous liquid inside the hemithorax. If blood accumulates in the hemithorax, it is called hem uh, hemothorax. If the, uh, the pleural effusion is chyrus uh, uh, fluid, it is called chirothorax. If there is an accumulation of pus inside the uh, pleural space, it is called pyothorax or ampiema. There are many uh, uh, types of actually hydrothorax. Uh, when we call, when we talk about transudative pleural effusion, uh, we have to consider many possible reasons. As I told you before, congestive heart failure is one of the main reasons. In many patients, it is the reason actually. Uh, we don't do any intervention in these patients usually because the usually the reason uh, would be. Uh, 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 non-consistent uh, administration of the uh, the uh, cardiac medications, uh, or sometimes the patient don't obey the the uh, uh, sodium poor diet. So uh, usually, we uh, simply advise the patient to take medications, or we simply advise the patient to 
obey the, uh, the sodium poor diet or salt poor diet. Uh, cirrhosis is one of the reasons, uh, nephrotic syndrome uh, that can lower the uh, oncotic pressure. Glomerular nephritis, peritoneal dialysis, hypoalbuminemia, atelectasis, as I told you before, with the analogy of lollipop. Uh, superior vena crawl obstruction, which can cause uh, congestive heart failure or right-sided heart failure. Trap lung can cause uh, some kind of atelectasis. Sarcoidosis can cause the inflammation of the uh, mediastinal lymphatics that can block the, uh, the absorption of the uh, fluid. Peritoneal dialysis could be another reason, mixed edema, cerebral spinal fluid leak, which, is, which causes uh, pleural effusion in a very small number of patients. Urinothorax is one of the rare reasons. Pulmonary arterial hypertension, pulmonary embolism, as I told you. Pericardial disease can cause uh, a congestive heart failure or extravascular migration of central venous catheter. It occurs actually at the ICU unit. So transudative pleural effusion is very important uh, in many patients. And we, uh, when we uh, diagnose this, usually we try to eliminate the reason. Uh, of course, as I told you, uh, pleural effusion is not a disease. It is a syndrome or it is a phenomenon. So there is another type of pleural fluid, which is exudative pleural fluid. Uh, and exudative pleural fluid can be, uh, uh, can be generated or can develop in any process that disrupts the integrity of endothelial membrane. In this situation, there is no uh, disrupted balance of oncotic and the hydrostatic pressure, but there is a disruption of endothelial membrane or mesothelial uh, tissue, uh, or there is an obstruction of lymphatic drainage from the pleural space, and it can occur uh, during infectious, neoplastic, inflammatory, embolic, vasculitic diseases. And some of some drugs such as dandroline, sodium, sodium or uh, bromocryptin can cause uh, exudative pleural effusions with some uh, idiosyncratic mechanisms. And actually, there are two main symptoms uh, of uh, pleural fluid. One of uh, them is dyspnea. Actually, we can live with only one lung. For this reason, even the fact that the pleural effusion uh, causes uh, total uh, atelectasis on one lung, some patients who didn't smoke uh, can live their lives without uh, any actually dyspnea because one lung is enough. But if the patient has uh, emphysema or other uh, uh, some uh, uh, some type of uh, parenchymal disease, pulmonary parenchymal disease, it can cause dyspnea. And also pleuritic chest pain can be produced uh, by the changed intrapleural pressure because nociceptive receptors can be triggered by the changed uh, uh, intrapleural pressure. Normally, uh, they are set to uh, minus five to minus 15 uh, uh, millimeter mercury uh, 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 pressure. Uh, when it, it changes, it triggers the nociceptive, uh, nociceptive uh, 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 response, which can cause the, the pain. Uh, how can we diagnose? Actually, first uh, examination uh, is is of paramount importance. Physical findings include dullness of percussion, diminished or absent breath sounds because of the atelectasis of the lung caused by pleural effusion, a decreased parameters or egophony at the level of the pleural liquid meniscus. Egophony is like a, if, you, uh, if you try to uh, talk uh, during uh, swimming in, uh, under the water, uh, or if you uh, uh, try to listen your friend uh, who, uh, who was speaking in, uh, inside the water, uh, you can understand what the egophony is. Uh, the higher pitch uh, or higher frequencies uh, are cut, uh, are suppressed, and it becomes egophony. So normally, uh, we have to uh, hear this kind of uh, sound 
But if you hear this kind of sound, downstone percussion, uh, it, mean, it could mean two things. First, pleural effusion. Second, large mass, intrathoracic mass. So, okay, um, examination is the first, uh, 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 first base or first thing that we should do, we should accomplish in order to understand if the patient has pleural effusion or not. But of course, radiology is very, very helpful. When the patient is in the upright position, a chest radiograph show, can show us uh, parabolic uh, dullness or parabolic actually uh, consolidation uh, just around the sinuses, as you see here. Blunting of normally sharp posterior cost costophrenic uh, angle can be caused by a, as little as 50 milliliter or 100 milliliter of pleural liquid. If you look at the textbooks, you can you could see some different uh, numbers. Actually, some say, some says uh, 100 milliliters can cause dullness of, uh, or the uh, blunting of the costophrenic sinus. Some says. Uh, 150 or 50 milliliter of liquid. Anyway, uh, at least 100 to be on the safe side, at least 150 milliliter of liquid uh, can cause this kind of uh, blunting of the costophrenic sinus. Of course, uh, uh, it is a little bit uh, more difficult to understand, but or to to uh, to uh, uh, to see uh, or to notify. But also, cardiophrenic sinus uh, can be blunted with uh, some kind of fluid. Uh, if you see this kind of parabolic uh, uh, consolidation around the lung, you can say that this is a probably free fluid. But uh, lateral decubitus film is very uh, helpful in order to understand if the fluid is uh, free or it is loculated. I, I show this slide, but you please know that it is important to remember that it is very difficult to make the uh, radiology uh, uh, technician to take a lateral decubitus film. They say, okay, doctor, you, you are right, but uh, it is not possible here. Uh, I cannot uh, arrange uh, the equipment in order to take this. So uh, I gave up uh, ordering lateral decubitus film. Instead of lateral decubitus film, there are two uh, radiological tools that are helpful. One of them is pleural ultrasound. It is very uh, a sensitive test for detecting pleural effusions. And also uh, it can detect loculated pleural effusions. Uh, if there is a loculation, if there are some fibrous uh, banding inside the hemithorax because of the chronic pleural effusion or chronic inflammation, it, it causes uh, pleural banding, pleural fibrous tissue. It can cause uh, loculated effusions, as you see here. Pleural uh, ultrasound, uh, probably you may uh, notice that we don't talk about ultrasound uh, during uh, thoracic surgery lessons because echogenicity of the lung is too low. But it is very helpful in order to understand uh, little uh, or uh, minimal uh, pleural effusions. Of course, uh, a chest radiograph is helpful in order to suspect of uh, loculation. If you uh, see this kind of film in a uh, in a patient uh, uh, in a patient who had this radiograph uh, at the upright position, you you should uh, suspect of loculated effusion because you see, uh, you don't see a parabolic uh, consolidation. But also CT as a second radiological instrument, CT is helpful to notify the loculated effusions. This uh, patient uh, was one of ours. Uh, this was taken after the operation. As you see, there are uh, many loculations uh, that developed after operation. So uh, CT is a straightforward uh, radiological examination tool to understand the loculated effusion. So what do we do? What should we do as thoracic surgeon, as our physician? Should we uh, take 
fluid sample in every patient? The answer is no. If you see a, re, a, re, a treatable disease, if you suspect of treatable disease, you don't have to make a toracentesis. You don't have to take uh, a sample uh, from the uh, pleural uh, effusion. But uh, for example, if the patient has a congestive heart failure, as I told you before, you should send the patient for, uh, for the treatment, proper treatment. If the patient has pneumonia, if the patient has parapneumonic effusion, you should send the patient uh, or you should give the, uh, the antibiotic treatment to the patient. But if there is a, a significant size of uh, effusion and if the effusion recurs despite the treatment, uh, you should take uh, some uh, a sample from the hemithorax. Or for massive effusions causing dyspnea or severe chest pain, catheter drainage should be uh, performed. How do we do toracentesis? Actually, this is the best position for the patient and the best position for you. The best position for the patient because patient uh, doesn't see you uh, in, uh, inserting the needle uh, in, inside his or her uh, hemithorax. Uh, the pain is like a pain of, of uh, intramuscular in, uh, injection. But of course, uh, psychologically, it is more worrisome than intra, uh, 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 muscular injection. Sometimes uh, the patient, if you see, if you if they see uh, you uh, coming toward at them uh, with a needle, very uh, long needle, uh, sometimes a patient could uh, try to flee from uh, outpatient clinic or the the room. So. This is best position for the patient. Also, it increases the uh, intercostal uh, distance uh, and that makes you more comfortable uh, when you do this uh, injection, uh, the uh, toracentesis. The best uh, uh, space is the seventh intercostal space, but uh, if the diaphragm is higher than usual, we should, very be, we should be very careful in order not to rupture uh, the uh, liver at the right side and the uh, discipline on, uh, at the left side. So it should be the most dependent uh, space in order to take uh, pleural fluid uh, very easily. So this is the needle and the pleural effusion and we should take uh, approximately 50 milliliter of uh, uh, pleural effusion. As I showed you before, if the patient has uh, dyspnea, severe dyspnea or severe pain, we should uh, actually uh, uh, empty the, the pleural fluid. We, we uh, insert a catheter uh, in order to drain the pleural fluid completely. What should we do? We actually uh, take the sample and we uh, distribute it uh, we should distribute it into five, uh, sometimes six portions. First portion should be sent to cytological examination in a patient with 60 years of or 70 years of age in order to understand if the patient has malignant pleural effusion. The second portion, which can be 10 milliliter or five milliliter, the second aliquot should be sent to the bacteriological examination. If there is a bacterium inside the pleural effusion, the uh, diagnosis is straightforward, which is MPMA, because normally pleural effusion should be sterile, should not, should not contain any bacteria. pH is important. The third portion should be sent to the pH uh, examination. But if you send this portion to the uh, biochemical, biochemistry laboratory, they reject it because they don't assess pH at biochemistry. You should send the IC, this portion to the IC unit. They tend to reject a portion because they don't want to take a plural effusions uh, for examination. And you should, uh, you should use your interpersonal uh, relationships, uh, if you will, uh, to, to, to make them accepted. So, uh, 
biochemical evaluation is very important. The fourth portion should be sent to biochemistry laboratory. They are not diagnostic, but suggestive. LDH, cholesterol, protein, anti-pro BMP, which is very important, white blood cell, amylase, triglycerides, glucose, adenosine deaminase, if the patient is suspected to have TB, tuberculosis, should be, uh, should be uh, assessed. And also, if the patient is uh, a woman, for example, with her 20s or 30s, or if the patient has bilateral uh, arthralgia or arthritis, you should send the fifth portion to the rheumatology laboratory to uh, assess antinuclear antibody or RF. So what should we do with these assessments? First, we should understand if the patient has actually exudative pleural fluid or transudative pleural fluid. If the pleural protein to serum protein ratio is greater than 0 0.5, or if the plural LDH to serum LDH uh, ratio is greater than 0 0.6, or plural LDH is greater than two thirds of upper limit of L serum LDH in, in, the, in cases of, in, in which you, you couldn't uh, assess the patient's serum LDH, or uh, as an accessory uh, criterion, if the plural cholesterol is uh, higher than 60 milli milli milligram per deciliter, the patient it should be uh, should be deemed as ha to have uh, exudative pleural effusion. If one or more of these criteria are met, the effusion is usually exudative. If none of these characteristics are present, a transudative mechanism should be suspected in these patients. Of course, these criteria are extremely useful, but we should make the diagnosis in the clinical context. Uh, there is no such way. To, to make a diagnosis with only biochemical examinations. So what should we do? High pleural amylase should suspect of uh, having or diagnosing pancreatitis, pancreatic pseudocysts, and some malignancies. If we, we come across low pleural glucose, we should think uh, a possible diagnosis of uh, tuberculosis and PMA, paraneumonic effusion, and sometimes malignancies, some malignant pleural effusions can cause low pleural glucose. The low pleural glucose uh, is caused by the metabolic activity of the cells inside the pleural effusion. If, if there is an extremely low glucose, rheumatoid arthritis should be the uh, diagnostic uh, decision or di diagnosis because uh, uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, T lymphocytes consume so much, so much glucose in the pleural fluid. Uh, ple bloody effusion, uh, which means, which uh, uh, sh should be decided if the uh, red, red blood cell count is higher than 100,000 per, per cubic millimeter, uh, sh uh, should uh, uh, point malignancy pulmonary embolism uh, or esophageal rupture or benign asbestos disease. Uh, adenosine deaminase is very important, but the negative predicted value is high for tuberculosis. If it is lower than 40 units per milliliter, uh, the, the, uh, you should exclude tuberculosis in these patients. This shows the bloody fluid effusion, not the uh, tuberculosis effusion. Blood effusion can, uh, can be seen like this, uh, very uh, dark or uh, very uh, blackish uh, pleural effusion due to the uh, oxygenation of the, uh, of the blood, the oxygenation of the blood, sorry. White blood cells uh, count uh, is important. If it is higher than 50,000 per cubic millimeter, it should... Uh, 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 possible uh, it should point the possible diagnosis of MPMA, but pul in pulmonary embolism, uh, viral pleuritis, benign asbestos effusion, malignant disease, or early tuberculosis pleuritis can cause high uh, WBC. Uh, and if the uh, if the eosinophils co uh, comprise more than 10% of white blood cells, uh, tuberculosis and malignancy 
should be suspected in the patient. pH is important. Uh, if pH is normal, a congestive heart failure should be suspected. Uh, but if it is lower than uh, 7.0, uh, NPM uh, could be the uh, cause of pleural effusion. Esophageal rupture can cause very low plur uh, pleural pH. Uh, and if the pH is between 7.0 to 7.3, vascular disease, tuberculosis, and hemithorax, uh, or uh, collagen vascular disease uh, could be uh, reasons for pleural effusion. What about antinuclear and rotate factor? Normally, we have antinuclear antibody to a single-stranded DNA because approximately 8 trillion cells uh, die every day in our organism. So uh, in these cells, there are DNA, and these DNAs uh, uh, actually uh, produce anti single-stranded DNA antibodies. But if plural antinuclear antibody is higher than serum antinuclear antibody, we should suspect of systemic lupus in the patient. And also rheumatoid factor, if the rheumatoid factor is higher than uh, 1 to 160, rheumatoid arthritis should be suspected. But of course, we don't uh, send these, the, the portion to the rheumatology laboratory in a patient uh, without any rheumatological problem. What should be the diagnostic pathway? So first, pleural fluid analysis is, the, is important. But uh, welcome to one of the blurriest uh, subject of the medicine, because approximately only one third of patients can be diagnosed with pleural fluid analysis. If there is a, a mass, transthoracic needle aspiration is uh, diagnostic. If there is a pleural uh, thickness, like in the case of mesothelioma or uh, tuberculous pleuritis or benign asbestos disease, Trucot biopsy is very uh, helpful. Trucot biopsy is done with pleural effusion usually with the patients with uh, thickened pleural uh, parietal pleura. Bronchoscopy is uh, helpful for the patients with intraluminal, uh, intrabronchial lesions. And uh, as last, one of the last resorts, uh, video thoracoscopic biopsy can be performed, can be accomplished. But of course, we should uh, uh, choose the least invasive method. But if it doesn't provide us um, a diagnosis, we can uh, switch, we can uh, uh, choose the other next uh, invasive method to video thoracoscopic biopsy. In very small number of patients, thoracotomy is needed. This is why I put this uh, 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 word uh, in a uh, with a dark blue on the uh, uh, dark blue uh, background. Max is almost uh, diagnostic in diagnostic in almost ninety nine percent of patients because during video assisted thoracoscopic surgery we can uh, see the lesions and uh, we can take the biopsy from the lesions. Of course. PET CT is helpful to take the side of or to, to def define this, uh, the side of uh, biopsy. So, uh, as uh, a, an example, I'm going to show you one uh, video thoracoscopic uh, procedure uh, that we did uh, last year, uh, which is very actually uh, demonstrative, uh, I think. Uh, and you can ask the questions during this video. And you see, uh, we uh, uh, lies, we uh, dissect the pleural uh, thickness, pleural uh, fibrous tissue around the lung. This is lung. Here, uh, this is the uh, thickened pleura. As you see, we are taking biopsy from the thickened pleura. Uh, we found that the patient uh, had uh, adenocarcinoma, uh, malignant pleural effusion. But in order to, to reach the, uh, the located effusion, we had to lyse, we had to, had to di dissect the pleural uh, thickening and some uh, fibrous tissue, as you see here. 
and we are now about to reach the plural space right now. Evet. Bu arada sorunuz varsa lütfen sorun. So this is loculated area. This is one of the fibrous tissue that I talked about. We are we I took this biopsy and this is the loculated effusion as you see. This is plural effusion. Uh, the plural effusion was found to uh, was found to con contain uh, malignant cells, uh, adenocarcinoma cells, and we sent the patient to uh, oncological treatment. Uh, it is possible to take biopsy, as you see here, from the suspected areas because it shouldn't be uh, white. And this is talc uh, to create the pleurodiasis to prevent the pleural effusion to form again. Evet. Uh, 